What is up, rockers? Welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms content here. I'm Ashinchi42. So today what we're going to talk about is 10 noob mistakes to avoid in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, while these tips are really aimed to assist newer and less experienced players, so some of these are still great refreshers for those of you who have been playing for a while too. So also, if you guys are wondering how I'm playing this game on a computer, this is actually is a Bluestack application. You can go to my description, there is a Bluestacks link there. Click that and you can download Bluestacks and start playing Rise of Kingdoms. Also, I would appreciate it if you smash that thumbs up if you like this video and share this content to those players that are starting out into the game or maybe you have a friend who is also starting out. Maybe these tips can help you succeed in Rise of Kingdoms. Noob mistake number one, do not put off binding your account. Now. This might be very simple, but there's a lot of players out there that like make this mistake. If you don't bind your account, you can lose your account. Your computer could crash. If you're playing on Bluestacks, your phone can crash. And all the time and investment that you have put in into your account is a total waste. So how do you bind your account? I've made a video about this a very long time ago. So in here, we're going to do a quick step on how to bind the account. So you got to go to your profile. So you click your profile, go to settings, click account, and you can link your account right here. So as you can see, mine is linked through Facebook and as well as Google. Now, if you're an iPhone user, it is probably going to be very different. Now, the interface on my old video isn't like this. This is actually a brand new interface. I was kind of completely shocked as I clicked into this one because I haven't really clicked into the binding part. So don't forget to bind your account and then you can also switch account. So, um, but the key thing in here, bind your account as soon as you start the game. This is the reason why this is our number one noob mistake. Noob mistake number two. A lot of people do this right away in the game is that they you know once they start getting the resources they would like to consume them right away and then what happened is that in the early stages of the game you have a lot of resources right away or even consuming like speed ups for this it's a little bit more intermediate type of guide for the speed ups you really need to understand when you have to compete for events to win them so for example this event you can win like 20 legendary commander sculptures, which is going to help you out with your commanders. Now, we're not going to talk about that really, but the big thing that we're going to talk about in here is the resource tokens. With these resource tokens, you're going to have a lot of resources up here. Now, the bad thing about it is that in the beginning of your game, your storehouse can only protect a certain amount of capacity. And in the unstable kingdom, not like where we are in right now we are in a very stable kingdom we're in kvk people that notice your amount of resources if it's a lot and if they need to like boost up a little bit they would pillage your city and they would steal all your resources so keep in mind is that when you are starting out into the game don't just recklessly consume all of your resource tokens i would say consume them whenever you need them so Let's say you have to power up for that day and consume them on that day. There's no need to show off all of your resources because if they see it, they will take it away from you. Another thing that you can do is if there's a case where you're being attacked, you can definitely use your peace shield to protect yourself. But honestly, just don't put a target behind your back. New mistake number three. Well, you're probably wondering different shirt from the entire video. I'm just gonna let you wander off from that. Um, no mistake number three is that people not maxing out their commander's first skill. And yes, I am a victim of this as well. Um, I have a proof in here that I have done this before. So even me, who has been playing this game for two years now, I made a mistake in my early stages of the game and you're gonna probably make the same mistake or you've made that mistake already. It's okay. But the next time you invest on your commanders, make sure that this first skill is maxed out. Now you're probably wondering why and you're going to say, there's so many good um, you know, skills out there that I want to work on. 
understand that whenever you're going to be upgrading your skill for your commanders, once you have unlocked these, it is going to be totally random. By unlocking them one by one and maxing them out one by one, you have more control of it. Let's say these three are actually um, locked right now. You're going to be able to focus on this, and then you unlock the second skill, then you can focus on your second skill, and then unlock the third one, you can focus on the third one. Now, there are some scenarios with other commanders, like the Gathering Commanders one, like this. For Sarka, what you can do is unlock right away because these are gatherer commanders. So with these type of commanders, you really get the benefits on the second skill or the third skill. So with that being said, if you are investing on a fighter commander, max out the first skill, don't mess it up. And then you can decide later on if you want to do a 5-5-1-1, which is you're going to unlock the second skill. Make sure you max that out first before you unlock the third skill. Now, understand the first skill of the commander is truly important because this is where your biggest type of damages or buff that are going to come from. Now, these active skills require some rage and you can see those little bars when you are fighting. It's going to accumulate and then once it accumulates, it's going to cast. Now, that is truly important because if you don't max this out, the skill damage or the buff that you're going to provide to your units or to inflict to other units are not going to be efficient. So max out first skill all the time is a very good rule, except for gatherers, all right? Noob mistake number four is that focus on your economic technology if you are not the player who is going to be uh, rallying or defending structures. What is the strategy here? I'll give you a brief strategy since this is not a video for our um, technology. First of all, these technology that you can see on the screen, you can get all of these for free when you start helping the villagers. So once you start playing the game, you will know that there are villagers and you can collect all of these from them until you max it out. So you don't really need to, and you can get the technology maxed out through that uh, process. You don't need to research these. Now, what I recommend for you to do is to get into T4. T4, these are very uh, strong units. Now, what you need to do is to do all the bare minimum and get T4 units right away and start training then. And you will understand why we're doing this in the future um, noob mistake. Now, by doing this, now, like I said, just do the bare minimum on this. You can always go back in and finish these up. Now, once you have been working on your military technology, you also need to work on your economic technology. But before you actually start working on all of these in here in the military, I would really recommend for you to finish this writing technology because it's going to allow you to increase your research speed by 10% at the max level. And as you go through it, there is this thing called engineering and mathematics. The engineering is going to allow you to increase building speed and mathematics is going to increase research speed. So, so these are very good strategy that is going to save you a lot of money if you are a spender and save you a lot of time if you're both a spender and free to play. But like I said, if you are not a whale or going to be the one who is rallying, leading wars, I would highly recommend for you to actually focus on the economic technologies in here to improve your account faster, gather resources, produce more resources within the city, and then slowly work on your military technology because you still need to work on your military technology. But when you are joining rallies or defending structures, you're actually using the captain's military technology. The only time you're going to be using your military technology is when you are the one who is leading uh, the garrison or the, you know, the rally, or if you are in the open field to battle. So in the beginning, I would highly recommend is just, you know, join the rallies if there are some rallies going on or defense structure if there's war. But if you're lucky and you are in a very peaceful kingdom, 
I would really recommend for you to focus on economic technology. Now, for my case, for my experience, I didn't do the same thing. You're probably wondering why am I giving this tip? Because when I was starting the game, there was a lot of wars and I was the leader and I had to focus myself into improving my military technology as fast as I can, as well as working on my economic technology. I am a spender. So it's a lot easier for me to do those things. But if you're free to play, it's going to be a little bit difficult. New mistake number five is do not waste time or speed ups. Upgrading your troops, keep training. All right, so what does this mean? So as you can see, we're constantly training troops. Everybody in your kingdom is gonna constantly train troops to improve their power. But as you unlock your technology with your T2, T3 and T4, you're going to be tempted to speed up everything when you are in T2 or T3. What I recommend for you is to just let it go, just like in Frozen. So what you need to do here is that just constantly train your troops as you progress, as you're working on your technology, as you're working towards unlocking T4, don't use your speed ups on T2 and T3. Just remember, as you grow, you're going to be unlocking these tiers. Remember, the growth phase is not that long. Now, if you are paid to win, of course, it's going to be a much faster. But really, the growth phase, it doesn't take that long. Soon enough, you will realize you have T4. And once you get into T4, that's probably the time that you should be using your speed ups. And that's the time you can upgrade your troops from T2 to T4, from T3 to T4, from T1 to T4. All right, that's the strategy that I would recommend for you. Don't speed things up in here in the first three, and you can speed things up in the T4 or T5. This advice will definitely save you a lot of time and money. Now, one thing I wanna mention again, when you are speeding things up, be smart about it, make your speed ups and resources count. So you should be consuming your speed ups and resources for you know troops or even for like upgrading your buildings or um, research is during the time where you can win legendary commander sculpture. That is the best way to do things. Now for buildings, you can try to time it. Now for research, you can collect it on the day of. Now, if you're also wondering how you can train a lot of troops, go to your shop, the VIP. You can get these from the bundles too when you purchase, but like, I, in the beginning of the game, I had no clue how people were like training a massive amount of troops and gaining a lot of points ahead of me. But since I wasn't a spender, I didn't have a clue in the beginning. So they actually are buying these level five reserves. Now we have a level six reserves. It depends on your VIP when this thing is going to be unlocked. So I was able to purchase my level six reserve with my VIP 17. And this is a 50,000 uh, troops training right away. So what I've done is that I have a training in here. It's training 52,000 troops. And I'm going to speed this up or collect it when there is an event where I can benefit and win. So just keep that in mind. It's going to play various different events and different strategies. But you can definitely cook your troops there, collect it, or speed them up at the time that you need them. And you will gain a lot of points and save a lot of speed ups. New mistake number six is leaving your troops unattended during kill event you probably don't know what kill event is yet but there's an event in rise of kingdoms where players have to kill or smash other governors in order for them to win they gain points by destroying your troops so as you can see right now my troops are stationed right now on outside of the, you know in the map it's fine because it's not a kill event if it's a kill event I would most likely hide my troops back into my city. Or if you're a little bit far and you don't want to get smashed, you can hide it through the flags. But either way, you don't want your troops out in the open because it will get wrecked by other players. So during kill event, I, you know, a lot of people complain about this in the early stages of the game. You're like, oh, he or she smashed me. I know I'm so mad right now because I got attacked, but it's really your fault. You need to understand the game, okay? So I'm telling you right now, when there's a Mightiest Governor event, there is this thing called Kill Event on the last two days. It's the last one day if you just started your, your kingdom, but normally it's going to be two days. So during that time, I'd recommend for you is to hide your troops. 
No mistake number seven is that do not let your hospital get full. You will lose troops that way. Now, I have two strategies in this point. For my playing style, I'm a little bit more of a whale. So for me, I don't like wasting my resources. I would rather have my troops die and focus my resources on training new troops because I have more value that way to win uh, legendary commander sculptures. But for typical practice is that don't let your hospital become full. Right now, I am in kingdom versus kingdom. And here, we actually have a higher um, capacity of hospital. Now, in your normal kingdom, you'll probably have 300 at the max. So with that being said, what you really need to do is go to your hospital, look at your capacity. If you have a you know slightly full hospital, stop fighting, clear your hospital, start healing. You can actually do like batch healing. Make sure you are in an alliance and then start your healing and get some help by clicking that handshake button there. And your alliance will help you and you are going to be able to collect your troops right away and clear your hospital faster in that point. Now, I've seen a lot of players in the beginning, they would fight recklessly, hospital full, they'll have a lot of debts. That would really set you back up and prevent you from growing your account. No mistake number eight is that do not assume that there are no rules in your kingdom or in your alliance. In you, if you are starting into the game, there's probably no kingdom rules yet. It's, it is going to be alliance rules. So in here, we have a little bit of our rules in this alliance as well. Um, I don't think I have them saved up already, but like, as you can see, we have a little bit of rules in here, the schedule for our holy sites guardians. Just keep in mind, ask your officers, ask your leaders, what are the rules within your alliance? Now, if you are in a kingdom and there is a council already, once they have captured the center piece of the map, which is the lost temple, which is, let me show you real quick. I think I have it saved up right here. Once this have been captured, this lost temple, there is going to be a king. Now, what you need to do is you need to ask them, what is the kingdom rule? Because after that point, they are going to be ruling the kingdom. It could be a set of counsel from multiple alliances. So just really ask your leadership and they will know what is the rule for that kingdom. New mistake number nine. Now I have done this before and I've been lazy. And honestly, it's going to happen. There's going to be days that you just you know, you just want to send out your gatherers to farm or kill a little bit of barbs. But honestly, this is a common mistake, I think, that, that I'm going to share. Um, daily objectives, do these because you get really good value from here. You get golden key, which is when you first start into the game, you, you, ha you will have golden key to open up new legendary commanders. Now we have the crystal key now. This is going to allow you to have some blueprint fragments, blueprints, and materials a magic box, and also epic commander sculptures, which you can use it on your epic commanders. There's also a, um, you know, basic action points and some speed ups in here. Just do your daily tasks. It's really worth it. Get that 100 gems every day and rack it up. So what did I say? Don't be lazy. Do your daily tasks. Do your daily objectives. New mistake number 10. Don't forget to ask questions. There is no such thing as a dumb question. There's no such thing as a silly question. It's really not beneficial for you if you don't ask questions, right? Ask questions to other content creators. There's more than me in here. Um, you can always hit me up. You can join our safe and fun community Discord and you can ask questions there. I have my link on the description. You can join us there. You can also ask on Facebook. There's a community. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram as well and shoot me a message if you don't have Discord. But a lot of the players actually use Discord in this game. I learned how to use Discord through Rise of Kingdoms. So I would say if you're starting out into the game, download Discord, join the Rise of Kingdoms Discord and join my Discord and you can learn a lot of things in there. Just hit us up, mention us. There's always people out here uh, that are going to help you out. 
Now, like I said, just don't be afraid. If you're confused, this is a very fun community. A lot of them is going to help you to succeed in the game. And just with the people that you're playing with, some of them may have no more knowledge than you. And, you know, just ask them. If you don't ask, you know, you're not going to know things. And what is the most um, rejection you can get from people? They just say no or they don't know. Right? So um, if you're new, I definitely invite you to our Discord. Um, you subscribe to my channel. We have a lot of uh, guides in here. And, um, you know, just share this content to whoever you find that is also a new player and share our channel. Tell them to, you know, come and subscribe and get to know this game a little bit more. We have in-depth more details in here. Um, of course, like I said, always you're free to hit me up. If I have the free time to do it, I will reply to you guys and I try to do my best to reply to everyone. Um, Discord is actually the best way to get a hold of me. Now, please... Um, try to only message me if it's really important because I do get a lot of messages from other players as well. But I do hope that you will have a nice journey here in Rise of Kingdoms. It's a very fun game. I've been playing this for two years now and I have an insane amount of commanders. So if you're looking for like awesome contents, some war contents, I can tell you right now, with these commanders, it's insane and it's fun. This is an RTS game that is crazy. In the future video, perhaps we can do it's, we can talk about battle practices in Rise of Kingdoms, movements, and those other things. Anyway, guys, you are now a rocker. If you don't know what it means, you'll figure it out. I will see you again next time.